Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the vlog. We're getting a couple of weeks behind, uh, well, maybe about 10 days so far, on the vlogs. And I thought it would be important to uh, like do a bit of a catch-up on them. And I've got some footage which I can't really put into uh, any videos, you know, at the minute. Today's the 17th, the evening of, Friday night, half past eight. I'm having a pint of proof of concept. And uh, yesterday, Abigail and myself made some face masks. This one's mine, because it's got germs on it, look. And that's Abby's, because she really likes pink flamingos and doggies. So yes, I actually made these. Uh, they look pretty cool, don't they? Uh, used a pattern off the interwebs and uh, sewed them up on the sewing machine. And uh, we've got these because uh, Gemma's and uh, Dominic's birthday is in July. And we wanted to go somewhere. So we're all ready to enter places such as maybe theme parks. Because we're masked up and ready to go. Anyway... The reason why I've got the camera rolling in the kitchen is, uh, yeah, the last video that went out was about the opening night. And, of course, that was now 15 days ago, 15, 13 days ago, actually. And uh, whilst we've not been open completely, uh, we've been doing four days a week, and it's not been bad at all. Uh, but I have lots of other footage from things I've been doing in the brewery and elsewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my comments on YouTube. And I'm going to buzz down all of this stuff and read questions in reverse chronological order. So the newest ones first and then we'll see how far back we go. I think I need to cover 14 minutes of footage or so. And then if we can manage to do that, then I've managed to do that. So uh, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So let's cut away to the actual footage I want to show you. And I'll place this phone somewhere nice like that. And I will just start reading the questions and see how we go. Uh, Kieran Jennings says on the stripping paint from old timber doors video what's the tool you're using around the beading so on this video I'm just stripping paint off an old timber door I called it stripping paint from old timber doors the video uh, it was just a vlog you know when I was doing the daily vlogs uh, when I was doing them daily and a load of people have got real arse on saying oh god he talks too much get on with stripping the doors because they don't Realise they're too stupid to realise that it's a vlog, uh, not a how-to video, but yeah, so it is what it is. Get a lot of that actually. People don't understand the, uh, you know, where <laughs> it's not how. To, not every video on YouTube is a how-to. Um, anyway, little uh, pet hate of mine that is. But what's the tool you're using around the beading? Well, the tool you'd use to strip paint from around beading is called a shave hook. So we've got EIHP uh, asks, Harry, I enjoy your vlogs, your time and givingness. By the way, from whom did you get your plate chiller from? Thank you. The plate chiller came from Heat Exchanges UK. Plate Heat Exchanges UK. One like mine, which is good enough for up to uh, five barrels. I'm under running mine at the minute. Always room for expansion. About 500 quid you're looking at. I think thereabouts. Maria Latham asks, may I ask what camera did you use to create this video? And that was on printed wood signs, uh, which is when we made uh, signs for the toilet doors in the brew shed way back in 2018, I think. Maybe 19. So the camera I was using back then was a Canon 80D uh, with a kit lens, I think 18 to 55. These days I tend to flick backwards and forwards from my Galaxy S10, which has a fantastic camera, which is why I bought it. The phone I had before that was a Galaxy S5 and I had that since 2015. I think it would have been, or 16. 
So I was well overdue an upgrade. So I thought, you know, I'm really good with foams. I look after them. And when I buy one, it lasts me a long time and I get the money's worth out of it. So I decided to treat myself with an S10. I'm a big Android fanboy. Don't like the iPhone stuff at all. Uh, just doesn't make any sense to me to go down that road and change everything over that I've got. Uh, very easy to sync everything in with Google and everything like that, which I absolutely adore. It's so simple and uh, I don't have any trust issues with them. You know what? Half of my life's on YouTube. Uh, so, hack away. You, <laughs> I ain't got much for anybody to steal anyway, so that's not an issue for me. So I don't yet yeah, really have any massive uh, confidence issues with having that kind of stuff on my phone. Really nothing to hide. So I decided to uh, go for another Samsung Android phone and it ended up being the S10 because of the fantastic cameras that it comes with and they are still hard to beat and more than enough uh, in terms of, you know, filming capacity for, for the vlogging that I'm doing considering I started way back on a little point and shoot uh, 720p. Oh God, I can't even remember what it was called. Anyway, a really crappy camera. Paul Sebastian asks, is the purging of cans necessary? If you're going to can condition beer, won't the yeast just convert oxygen into CO2 anyway? Well, I'm hoping it does. But the idea of purging is so we don't have excess dissolved oxygen pickup in the beer when it's going into the can. So uh, the more you can keep the O2 away from the beer, the better that co2 is there as a backup if i could i'd have the cans go into a co2 enriched atmosphere and there'd be no o2 at all i haven't really dialed in the post co2 purge so at the moment i'm just using that to drop a co2 blanket on top of the beer before the lids land on there but it's all still very much kind of in development and of course we are can conditioning and we will be in the foreseeable future so even though we are going to have a little bit of yeast in there to pick up any dissolved oxygen, still there's no excuse for allowing oxygen to get to your beer. So I'm trying as hard as I can to prevent that. And this is the best solution I've got. But I certainly wouldn't just shrug my shoulders and let it happen. Leroy Gross, or Gross, he's on a video where I'm doing a bit of welding. Sanitary welding. He says, will it be sanitary if I weld on both sides with no purge? So he's talking about welding stainless steel as a sanitary fitting for a hygienic application, such as brewing. Uh, it won't be sanitary if you weld on both sides with no purge, because what's going to happen is you weld one side, and on the other side, all of the oxygen is going to get to the weld and contaminate that steel. And then when you come back to welding the other side, not only are you going to add all of that oxidation into the base metal, into the parent metal, but you're going to have the same problem on the other side. It's going to heat up and oxidise again. So it'll be, you'll be constantly flipping from one side to the other, from one side to the other, trying to get a good finish. And it doesn't work. You need to back off your welds, ideally purge them so it's a completely oxygen free environment. And if you can't do that, you need to be clamping it down hard onto something like a heat sink, an aluminium bar, or something like a piece of copper. Anything that pulls the heat out of the weld and prevents oxygen getting to it is perfect. Richard Brown asks, are you planning to ship cans for home delivery? And then he says, I now see the website. Uh, yeah, the website is up and we're using it for bookings at the moment for people who want to come and drink in the brew shed under the COVID-19 regulations, which are still ongoing at this point. And I do intend to go live with cans. So at the minute, all I've got to sell is tins of vacant gesture. Yesterday, they came out of conditioning and I've drank a couple and they're lovely. But they're not ready really to go onto the website because I still haven't sorted out linking the website with a, sh with a courier and sorting out the shipping and all that kind of stuff. And I have a funny feeling 
there's going to be quite a few people all around the world who want to get their hands on these beers and I want to be able to send beers to places like the States and Australia and everywhere else without it costing a fortune but also at the same time I don't want to do myself out and it wants I don't want it to cost me money to send this out because money's tight at the minute because we haven't been open for 15 weeks so yeah it's coming folks so bear with us I'm hoping that the uh, proof of concept which I canned the other day will actually be ready to go online as well at the same time so that should be ready about the start of August so it'd be nice wouldn't it if we could get two beers online instead of just one give people a bit of variety I'd also like to do some other stuff as well maybe some Amarillo IPA I've got in mind the Plum Porter the Coconut Shy all these things I'd like to put into can as well so it makes sense if people could jump online and actually buy a six pack of mixed beers or a six pack of each line it'd be nice anyway right Aiden's Aiden scaping long time follower of the channel I know he says how much would a fully automatic canning line cost out of interest and then Henry Elkasa or Elksa has replied I've seen some used 20 something cans per minute lines in the 60 to 70 thousand dollars range plus delivery so the canning line that I've got I spent six thousand plus vodka and tonic or VAT on the can seamer I did look at using a cannula or all of the other ones that are available the cheaper bench top can seamers but I was really quite concerned about not getting a proper seam consistently on the cans and then sending these cans out into the world and having them leak so that was the main issue there that's why I decided to buy once and cry once as they say and spend the money on a seamer but the fillers I did see them available from companies Innovus Engineering two-headed filler for instance was in the region of 15,000 quid yeah it's a lot of money and then there's others on there as well MD Engineering do one all that kind of stuff Danny Beer also do one people have put me onto this Swedish guy I think who makes one anyway they all cost a lot more money than what I spent on the filler yes granted we did have a lot of help from people in the community to put the code together and everything like that so that really was a freebie I guess but we've made it free to everybody else which is available on github as well if you search for open beer filler you can program an Arduino to do exactly what mine does and then on there also are the plans to build a can filler exactly the same as the one that I've got so even though mine's up operating and working perfectly uh, you can build one too. To give you an idea, I spent about £1,000 on materials such as pneumatic rams and uh, stainless steel. That kind of stuff. Sol solenoid valves. They were the most difficult things to get right and I'm still not 100% happy with them. But they're functional for now. But yeah, I'd like a solenoid valve that's hygienic and fast acting. Whereas the ones that I've got, after every use, I have to break them apart because they have little holes in the diaphragm valve, which allows the pressure to equalise so the valve can close and the valve kind of uses the fluid pressure to seal itself, which means that it's not 100% hygienic, so you can't just flush it through with a uh, sanitizer at the end of the day and then come back to it tomorrow. You have to strip it every time. Commercial ones, though, or upwards of £15,000 for a filler. So to make one, that was the natural thing for me to do. Dimpy Jigsaw, another long time follower, on the uh, Seems OK To Me video. So how does the other breweries that fill carbonated beer into the tin do it? Just slower or shorter distances? A person would think that the whole idea of tins is not to carbonate in them. So he's talking about filling cans of beer with already carbonated beer without carbonating in the can so yeah they do a lot of them uh, can fill tins of beer 
which is already carbonated, negating the need to can condition. So in order to do that, you need to be able to do a few things in the brewery before the beer actually reaches the canning machine. So one of those things is to be able to uh, chill the beer to almost freezing, about one degree if you can. And that prevents any CO2 from breaking out of the beer or prevents <laughs> it reduces the amount of CO2 that breaks out from the beer. Another thing that you need to be able to do is carbonate the beer before it goes to the can filler. So you need tanks which are pressure rated. I built my tanks, none of them are. So we can't carbonate anything in house unless we put it into a keg first. And then of course, uh, you need to be able to deal with the foaming issues, keep your lines cool on the can filler, and uh, yeah, I'll probably have a massive throughput. And if we ever upgrade and to a, a, a new brewery that is custom built, or off the shelf if you like, where we can do all these things, then yeah, I think it'd be worth then investing in a can filler that's all singing or dancing. But the one that I've got, remember, is just a step up from what we do as home brewers, and uh, I'm just trying to make it commercially viable so I'm not a busy idiot. Uh, so yeah, this way, and you'll find it's also really, really common and becoming more and more popular in the United Kingdom, can conditioned beer has a real strong following. And in real terms, having that little bit of yeast in the beer in my opinion, makes it feel like a more natural product. Maybe reduces the shelf life a little bit, but I think that the yeast also looks after the beer in the tin because it does help it to condition. And uh, well, it makes the market more accessible for the little guy like me, uh, where otherwise we're going to be competing against the likes of Molson Coors and coca-cola company and all that who've got all the kit all the gear and no idea well i'm the other way around i've got an idea but i ain't got no gear anyway that's it folks i'm going to wrap this up we've got to 16 minutes on the clock and i don't know if i've got enough footage to cover all of this waffle thanks for listening hope you enjoyed uh this brings us up to date somewhat we're catching up to today which is the 17th so uh, maybe Maybe I'll see you sometime next week, the 20th or something. I don't know. Tune in then. Subscribe. Do what you want. Leave a comment. <laughs> it's up to you. Cheers. See you later. Bye. I'm having a drink. Proof of concept. Lovely. <laughs>